April 27th, 2017. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 125 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. On a recent episode of Gambling with an Edge, they were interviewing author James McManus about a book he wrote back in 2009 called Cowboys Full, The Story of Poker. Kind of like a history of poker. history of poker, good. And during the interview, they briefly talked about George Duvall, who was probably the most famous riverboat gambler of the 1800s. Okay. Now, why is he famous? Well, one of the reasons he's famous is because he wrote a book about it. Oh, it's like okay. it's like forty years He's gambling author. out. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you know he became no, so he was kind of known yeah. in circles, and then he wrote a book. So yeah. you, it's a free book. It's in the public domain now. You can just go he, down. He didn't and download do anything it. crazy. Or... Well, not any. Well, I don't want to say that there weren't any. I can't think of a specific example. It's okay. like, but I mean, he got into fights and you know yeah. shootouts. Because in those days, oh I mean, yeah, if somebody... oh, and he was a cheat. Oh, There's he no was qu- a cheat. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, he was okay. a cheat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anybody who won back then at like poker it were was cheats. probably that was, cheating. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just kind of the way it was back okay. then, right? So. <laughs> but anyway, listener James asked if I'm related to George Duvall in any way. Mm-hmm. Our last names are spelled exactly the same, although I capitalized the V in the middle of the yeah. name, whereas George Duvall did not. You've got two capital letters in your last name. Correct. I've always admired that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought that was cool. I don't know why. It's <laughs> two capital letters. Well, from what I understand, pretty much everyone with the last name Duvall, with that spelling, is related in some way, regardless of capitalization. It's just not that common a name. Right. And that's kind of right. what I've heard from relatives. Yeah, because you see so. it spelled... Like Robert Duvall. Duvall, Duvall, right? Like that. that That's way way more common. Common, But but this specific uh, spelling is is pretty unusual. Well, I know for sure that I'm not a descendant of George Duvall, but I'd say it's pretty likely that we have a common ancestor. How do you know you're not not a descendant? Well, I mean, if I can, you know, trace my family tree back to the 1800s and he's not there. So you've already done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know... Uh, but, He's uh, not there. Yeah. Maybe he was under an assumed name because, you know, I mean, he didn't want to get shot. Or or may, uh, maybe Duvall's not his name. No. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling that we're probably related if we go back maybe, you yeah, know, probably, a few yeah. generations before that. Right. I do know for a fact that I am related to Frank Duvall, the composer okay. who wrote the theme songs for The Brady Bunch and Family Affair and My Three Sons. And a lot of movies, we were watching Whatever Happened to Baby Jane the other night. He did the music for that. Right. My grandparents actually met him at a family reunion years so, ago. you know, would you rather be related to a composer who, I mean, that's quite a record of sure. things he did. Yeah. Or would you rather be the most famous gambler in the 1800s? One of those? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good question. Let's just say that I'm related to both of them, and that just makes me proud. Yeah, there you go. That, that's, my, that's what I'd be saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, when this question was asked, you should have just immediately said, oh, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, we're like 22nd cousins or something. You <laughs> or know. he just said, oh yeah, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> well, now Mike, my, my grandfather... His who name you knew, George. His name is George Duvall. That's when I saw this. Yeah. I'm like, well, your grandfather was named George Duvall. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there you go. There's Something's going on here. So you could honestly say you are related to George Duvall. I said, oh yeah, he's, <laughs> he's my, my dad's dad. He's my grandfather, George Duvall. Yeah, anytime somebody asks me now, are yeah. you related to George Duvall? Oh yeah. Sure. Mike and I used to go to Vegas with him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Vegas? The 1800s? Oh, he lived a long time. <laughs> yeah, I guess he He's did. He's the last survivor of the 1800s. <laughs> That's right. Just died here last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, this is something we've been meaning to talk about for a while. We went, uh, a while back, we went to Barona, which is one of the tribal casinos out here. And we'd been anxious to get out there because they've got five times odds at the craps table, right. which is good for the uh, around here. And they've got not only the fire bet, but also the sharpshooter bet, which right. pays when you make a certain number of points that don't have to be unique. Right. You could roll like a, you know, six as a point, yeah, just, like three times and you already have right. won the bet. Because you right? know how many times we've done that where we've... We've rolled five points, but it's only been like a six and a five. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. You know, yeah. we had four sixes or something. So we went out there, and I was curious as to how you make the bet. Because, you know, on a fire bet, you put it right in front of you. Right. For the, here, the sharpshooter and the fire bet, you just throw them into the center. The stick yeah, takes care of it. And they kind of just place them. Yeah. It's kind of in, relative in to where rel- you are. Right. Yeah. So you'd think, you know, this is the kind of thing that we would love. We hated it. Yeah. 
And it's funny because Barone is kind of a nice casino. It is, and it's... I mean, it, I like the way it's laid out mm-hmm. and everything, and it, you know, it's got pretty good clientele. Yes, it's got the best blackjack rules of any of the casinos say, around right, here, yep. the best video poker pay tables of any casino, they for sure. They say the loosest slots. Yeah, I, you I don't know, know, I don't about know that. how you quantify that, yeah, but, I, but they say that. Yeah, but what it was, it was the crew. They were terrible. Just, I mean, it was like we were the enemy. Yeah, it's like... We don't even know you, but we hate you. And, you know, like the boxman, there were a few times where he was telling people to hit the back wall. Right. And it was always, without looking at the person, please hit the back wall, like right. like they're a robot. You know, they don't look right. up. It's not personable. And, you know, right. oh, next time you throw, be sure. No, it was just like, you know, they're on autopilot. Right. Just right. rude. Yeah, just rude. And, and also, it was just this weird, like, they didn't want to be there. Yeah. It wasn't like they, I mean, it was like they hated you, but it was also like... <laughs> You know, I don't even want to be here. Mm-hmm. You're you're an annoyance to me that you showed up at this table. Yeah, you know, I, you know, weird. as craps players, and that's what we love to do. Of course, I don't see us going back there again. We no. we I wanted to make no. sure that we mentioned that everything else about the place we like. Right, and in fact, Mike, you know, we drove there separately. But after you left, I sat and played some of the stadium blackjack they have. They have stadium blackjack and stadium roulette. Right. And it's great because the minimums are lower. I was able to play $3 a hand on stadium blackjack. All the, the good rules. I think they may hit 17, but, you know, three to two payout. Right. All, you know, the good rules right. and For lower side limits. bets and everything. Yeah. And, you know, it was great. I got to take my mom out there because she's always intimidated going to a, you know, right, a real a blackjack real table. Too. And this, it, the great thing about stadium blackjack is that you can all sit together. You all get the same hand. You know, right. you can talk about, oh, here's what you should do. Here's what you should do. You can right. bet different amounts, but, right. uh, you know. Yeah, so. well, it's a much more social game. If you're with a group, it'd be great. Oh, yeah. You can right. get so many people in a line. Right. Yeah, there's right. so many. But, yeah, I, I don't see us going back because no. that. Uh, I won't go there again. I, I said after mm-hmm. that time, I'm yeah. not going there again. Yeah, there's, there's no, re- no reason for me to go there to feel bad. Yeah. We did lose. I mean, it was terrible. Yeah. But as we've said before, you know, that doesn't have anything to do with how we're going to assess the quality or the enjoyment of a casino. Right. We did happen to lose, so that made it even worse. Right. We uh, never even came close to the even the sharpshooter, no, let alone the fire. No. So Well, we weren't there very long either. <laughs> no, it was so bad. I mean, we were not it, there we, very long. It was bad, and we just left. But when you're losing... At least if the dealers had said something like, oh, this is really going bad, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Just, you know, yeah. maybe, you know, let's change the cards or, yeah. you know, at Harris, they'll say stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They'll say, yeah. oh, this is terrible. Let's change the cards. Ask them if we can change the cards, you yeah. know, or let's do something different. Let me pick the dice for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, just... they, they do stuff. I mean, these guys were like the rude machine. <laughs> yeah, it was like the rude machine. It's not a lot of fun. <laughs> not a lot of fun. It, it's, uh, we've said it before. That's the most important thing to us at a table is what's the crew like? Because right. basically the rules are going to be pretty much the same. Same no matter right. where it goes. So. And I don't want to tell people not to go to Barona. No, and that's why I, I wanted but, to also include, you know, some of these other things about it. It's just uh, I'll tell you what, I won't go there again because no, I'm gonna be playing craps. Yeah, we're craps players, and, and so we're like that. And we've had that problem in the past there. Uh, yes, this is nothing too. new. This, this is nothing new. Yeah, it's happened before. And so, you know, you go back, you know, years later and you think, oh, you know, they'll they'll have mellowed out. No. Yeah. Well, it's the same. I, I used to go to the poker room there and it was great. Right. I love the poker room there. I haven't been in a long time, but you know, yeah, this this one thing, the, yeah. the craps cruise. And why you know? is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't you know. You know, why is that? I, I don't know. They have to stand the whole time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like any much, other. Yeah. yeah, like any other dealer, it's yes. too much work. Yeah. I mean, there's no difference dealing craps than anything else. Mm. Why would the blackjack people be nice or the poker dealers and the craps people yeah. not be? I don't know. Maybe they don't get enough tips. Maybe. There. I, I maybe. Uh, but I you know. know. Well, another story. Now, a few weeks ago, we were at Harris, Southern California, as we always are. And we had been playing for a while, and we took a break. And when we came back to the tables, there wasn't really room for both of us. So you started playing a little bit, and I was watching. Right. And then I noticed our friend Mary was over playing Pie Gal Poker. She'd been like there for several hours, and you know, yeah. we finally That's just noticed her. That's usually the case. Yes, hey, there's usually, Mary. She's yeah. been here the whole time. So I went over there and started watching her play Pi Gal Poker, and then I started betting on her hand. You know, there, there are different circles on the table. You can actually bet on somebody's hand Kiss along with death. them. Kiss the death mark? Uh, yeah, that's what I was <laughs> called. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my new nickname based on, because uh, as soon as I started betting on her hand, she was just, it's just like we lost every hand, and then she was out of money and went home. So that's how bad it was. But something happened at the table. I don't even think I told you about this, Mike. Maybe I no. did. But anyway, it was going badly, but uh, on one of the hands, the dealer turned over his hand, and he had had a straight with a king in the two-card hand, right. which is a very good hand for anybody hand. to have. Yeah. 
as a player, you you hope to push against that hand, right? right. right. But as a dealer, you're going to win more than you're going to yeah, lose. Yeah, so it's a good hand. So the guy in first position, he saw it, ah, and he immediately left the table. He was out of money. Uh-huh. And then it came to us. I think we pushed. I think we had the king beat up top. And as he's starting to go around the table, I, I looked, and I, I noticed that he also had a flush. Okay. A flush with like a terrible two-card hand, like it was a flush 7-5 or something. Right. right? So a hand that's going to be nobody, but probably push almost right, everybody. Right, right. And clearly, the better way to play that was the way the dealer had done it, with a straight, straight and the, the king, king up top. Right. But at casinos, when they teach the Pai Gao poker dealers how to set hands, they have a set of house rules Correct. on how to set all the hands. Right. And these rules are, they keep them fairly simple. Right. So that the dealers don't have to memorize a lot of different combinations. Sure. And I had remembered, at least at a casino I where I'd seen house rules before, that one of the rules was if you've got a flush and a straight, always play the flush. Right. Well, that makes sense if you think about it. It's because it, it keeps the, the rule easy. It keeps the rule easy, but in the long run, the house is going to be... They're they, okay to push. They're yeah. going to be there forever. Mm-hmm. So they're okay to push this hand. They're not going to lose it. Because they're going, and in the long run, they're taking 5% it, of all right. the winnings, right? right? So yeah, yeah, right. And there might be a caveat on the rule, like, you know, always play the flush unless you can play like a pair with the straight or some, right. I, I don't know, there's always some well, kind of, you know, sure. something else yeah, like I, that. If you had a straight and a pair, you'd definitely do that. So I brought it up. I said, hey, wait a second. You know, you've also got a flush. I think that's the way you're supposed to play it. And it's funny because the player next to me said, no, 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 no. And I turned to the player and I said, no, I know it's wrong that, you know, if you're a good Pai Gao poker player, right. you would never do that. But I'll bet you that the house rule here says it. Uh-huh. And so they called over the pit who happened to be Mario. Okay. Who, you know, used to be a yeah, dealer. We know him yeah. real well. And he looked and he said, yeah, we have to play the flush. And so... Now, what about the guy that walked away already? He pushed. He, so they put his bet aside because, uh-huh. you know, uh, he thought he had lost and then he walked away. Right. And it turned out it was a push. And as we went around the table, sure enough, enough uh, I was worried. It's like, oh boy, I'm going to yeah, bring this right. attention yeah, and it's somebody, going to mess lose, somebody else. Right? I know, I know. But as it turned out, yet another player, there was a woman at the end of the table, she would have lost and she uh, ended up pushing yeah. when he played the flush. And all the rest of the people probably were going to push either right, way. Either way right, either way. You know, so I actually, you know, helped the players. So, you know, I just thought it was kind of interesting and something to keep in mind too. You, you know, the dealer just didn't see it. Yeah. Right. He's. It was actually a joker. He had a joker in the hand, so the joker was right. filling that's in a probably, straight or a flush. So that's probably, that's probably why he missed it right away. Yeah. yeah right. Ace so, of straights and flushes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty good story. It's I, a good story. Yeah. <laughs> but did the guy come back and get his money? I never know what. Ha- I, I don't know because you know Mary went home. She yeah. Like, yeah, f- a few hands later, and then I ended up you know meeting up with you at the craps table. Again, so I don't. Well, know they what know happened. his name because he probably had a card. Yeah. So there's no reason they shouldn't get the money back to him. I, I think somehow. so. Next time we see Mario, I'll try. I'll remind him and see if see he'll if he, remember it. And, yeah, see how that uh, yeah, works out. Yeah. I'm just curious if he doesn't come back. Do they actually track him down? Because they have his name do. in the computer. Yeah, some places right? do. They'll look around. Hey, yeah. hey, there he is. There he is. Or I'm, they next time he clocked in somewhere, they'd say, "Hey, it says in our computer here that you left some money, and yeah. here's your money." I I remember years ago at Las Vegas Club, I was playing craps, and seven came up, and I just ah, uh, and I it disgust. I just ran away from the tables. Like, I can't believe bet? this. No, it turned out it was the come out roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought you were just screwed up. I thought it'd been a seven out. Right. So I left. And then later on, I'm walking around the casino. Hey, there he is. There he is. They found me. Uh And, you know, they gave me the chips back (laughs) that. uh, I don't know if you should tell that story here. (laughs) Oh, I was young. This this is the Las Vegas club. This was back before it stunk. So so, (laughs) that was a long time ago. That was a long long time time ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, I don't know that the Vegas club ever did not stink. Yeah. So (laughs) (laughs) that makes sense. Yeah. That's probably, maybe that's another reason I ran away from the table. Plus yeah, yeah. seven out, plus it stinks. <laughs> I'm out of here. Mm. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first, youcanbetonthat.com, and click through our Amazon link that's kind of at the top of the page. It's a little bit down from the top of the page. <laughs> <laughs> How far's a little? Well, not that bad, but it's not at the very top. And, you know, some <laughs> people have been having trouble finding it. So, you know, just it's a little bit down from the top, and it's a banner. It says Amazon. <laughs> I'm one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I can't find anything. <laughs> All right, it's time for our voicemail hotline segment. Hey, remember, call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. And maybe we'll play your clip on the show. First up is Matt. 
Hey guys, it's Matt from California. Quick question regarding your opinion on this crap strategy. So I have a five dollar table player, most comfortable there, maybe ten, absolutely not twenty five. However, a couple weeks ago in Vegas, I was really drawn to the Bellagio or Caesars kind of crafts area. Great atmosphere, really loud, really exciting. Dealers seemed really nice. And I thought, what if I played no pass line, obviously no odds, and then took maybe $30 placing the 6 and the 8, or the 6 or 8, depending on how the rolls go, and then pressing that up 60, 90, maybe 120 before pulling it back. What are your thoughts on playing higher denomination place bets no pass line. Thanks, guys. Bye. I couldn't believe when we got yeah. this call. I know. Because That's th- what I'm thinking is he's saying it. This is exactly what I've been doing yes. playing with you, Dr. Mike, recently. Right. When we go to a $25 table, mm-hmm. which sometimes happens. I mean, you know, I'm fine playing at the 5 or 10 well, or but you, 15. When we've been going lately, they're just too crowded. They're, they're all crowded. And yeah. we get there kind of, you know, later evening. And it's like the 25 is the only one open. So mm-hmm. that's fine for me. And I'm happy. Yeah. And we go there. and But that's a little out of your comfort yep. zone. So, yeah, you've been doing exactly that's the same exactly thing. Exactly Six that. and eight so, or I don't, I don't make a pass line bet. And right. then once the point's established. Uh, six, now, I don't press. And right. I wouldn't rec- recommend pressing unless you really get on a hot roll. Because if you press right from the beginning, I think you're going to lose your bank roll pretty, pretty quickly quick, yeah right. so i don't press but you know maybe after you well, know if, if you have it, repeated it, i'll right, start pressing would, but if you had repeated a few you'd probably press or yeah. you might take mm. another number yeah or, right it, or yeah, yeah if, or if place the point place the point that's usually yeah, what i'll do if the point do. isn't six or eight right. yeah that's exactly you know, what i've been it's doing funny and now when it's mark's turn to roll mm-hmm. he sometimes passes but when he wants to roll he'll just put a quarter on the line yes. and not take odds correct and i take his odds yes and then you know you just have that quarter invested so it's like you know, maybe you had a five or a nine, right? Mm-hmm. All right, you just got that quarter on the line. Well, and you know, you put a quarter on the pass line. That's still you know one point four one percent house advantage. Right. So that's better than placing the six, six or, or the eight. eight. You know, seven right. eleven on the come out. Boom! I've already won the twenty five dollars. Right. right. So yeah, that's also a good way to go. But that's yeah, great I, the way you play. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's fantastic <laughs> when a seven eleven comes up. But if two three twelve comes up, Terrible. devastating, 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 devastating for the way that I play. <laughs> no, that's exactly what we've been doing. That's funny. Well. You you know, your advice is do that. Yeah. Well, it always is good advice if you're at a table where the limits are too high for you, but you want to play there for some reason anyway, like yeah. like at Bellagio. We've always sure. said, you know, we love playing at Bellagio, mm-hmm. but the limits are kind of high. Yep. You just adjust the way you play, yep. right? Yep. You can have just as much fun. Some guy gets makes a bunch of sixes Sure, and I mean, you know, six, 30 each on the six and eight, that's like having a $5 come bet with 25 odds on each of them. Right. Right? I mean, right. you're missing out on that come out roll, but oh, right. yeah, yeah. So on a recent episode, we were talking about what do we do? What do you do, Doctor Mike, with hardways on the come out roll? We do have a, a call kind of related to that. All right. Hey, Doctor Mike, Dave from Northern New Jersey. Love your show. Listen, I just had a comment about the hardways question with the come out roll. Why is it that Vegas is the only one that's different about that? Anywhere else you go, hardways are automatically off. They don't even ask it. Vegas. If you don't say anything, they're automatically on. Most dealers will ask it, and it seems to me like for them it's a pain in the butt to have to ask every time. Why don't you just make it off like the rest of the world? Anyway, looking forward to playing with you guys when we meet in May for the 360 Vegas vacation. Have a good one. Thanks. Keep up the good work. I'm with Dave. Yeah. I mean, why not just make it off and never have to ask? It's the asking part. We don't have an answer to the question. Why? uh, Well, here's the thing. It varies from casino to casino. This is something that is not consistent amongst all crap tables. Right. Some casinos, the hard ways are automatically off on the come out roll. In some casinos, they're always on on the come out roll. And if you don't know, you have to ask. I wouldn't be surprised if there are even some Las Vegas casinos that are different from the other Vegas casinos. No, I'm sure there are. You always, as a player, you need to find out, hey, you know, are the the hard ways automatically on or off on the come out roll? Who knows why it is? Typically, uh, though, if they are on, they usually do announce... Hard ways are working, less called off. Yeah, that's a very now, if common you're not paying attention, stick. you might miss that. Yeah, but they almost always say that at places where they're off. Yeah, yeah. Now where they're off, like at Harris Rincon, 
they never announce it. Yeah. yeah. They're just it's off. Just, they're just off. And yeah. I mean, they don't say, hey, they're off. If you want them working, you got to say something. Yeah, yeah. They're just off. They never say anything. So, you know, you'll see new people come out yeah. there and they, you know, oh, well, I hit that. No, yeah. they're yeah. all off unless yeah. you told us to turn them on. Now, it's to the casino's advantage to have them working. Right. You know, the casinos want all and bets working all the time. time. Right. right. So. And I think that's why that's that way in Vegas. And probably. I mean, I why think it's, it's different. A, why it's different in other casinos. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's hear from Marty. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. Marty from Northern California. Hey, last weekend I was out in Vegas for the Academy Country Music Awards. And after the show, which was at T-Mobile, I stopped in what is eventually going to be called The Park, but it's still Monte Carlo. And they've got something on their dice game which I have not seen on another game yet. They've got a side bet, so no fire bet, no all tall small, but they've got something called the Golden Dice Payout. And, and how it works is you make a bet, up, you know, 5 or $10 or even a dollar before the guy comes out the first time. And then what this does is it pays based on the number of passes that the shooter has. And so if a guy throws, you know, four sevens in a row, that's considered four passes. And so the way this thing works is four passes pays even money, five or six passes pays four to one, seven or eight pay 10 to one, nine or 10 pay 25 to one, 11 or 12 pay 50 to 1. If they make 13 to 14 passes, it pays 100 to 1. 15 or 16 passes, 1,000 to 1. 17 to 19 passes, 2,000 to 1. And if they hit more than 20 passes, it pays 5,000 to 1. Anyway, interesting bet. You know, it's probably worth throwing a buck out there every time. You just never know. Sometimes uh, a guy comes out with a, a couple of 7s and a few 11s, and, you know, you kind of get up to that probably five or six times pretty easy. Anyway, interesting bet. Um, never seen it anywhere else. Uh, except Monte Carlo. Anyway, love the show, guys. Have a great weekend. See ya. Bye. Yeah, the Golden Dice Challenge. Yeah, we, we talked about this We before. have talked about it before. The only place that we had heard it was being offered was MGM Detroit. Okay. So this is news to us that it's now being offered at Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo. Yeah. It, the one nice thing about the bet is that if the shooter rolls a 2, 3, or 12 on the come out, right. that doesn't count against him. Yeah, don't passes don't count against right. him. Right, so it's how many passes is a shooter going to make, and it doesn't matter how many right. passes he doesn't make. Right. <laughs> right, it's just until the 7 out, basically. Totally, right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, throwing out a buck, that's fine. This is this has a huge, huge house, house edge, edge though, yeah. over 27%. Yeah, well, you is, think <laughs> about it, how many times, to get to a 4 limit, mm-hmm. okay, unless you... You've rolled a couple sevens or an eleven on the come out. You've got to make four points. Yeah, okay, that's that's pretty, that's pretty difficult mm-hmm. in itself. Mm-hmm. And how many times have we seen a shooter? You know, they'll roll a couple sevens. Sometimes I've seen three or four sevens on the come out, and you're going to win that. But how many times is this? Oh, they rolled an eight. Yeah, right. You it's, know, it's 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 true. The, I imagine that you, this usually gets paid off when yes, the shooter on the come out roll just oh seven eleven three eleven right. you know seven oh there's four right there there's, and then everything after that's and, gravy right but, and then everything's gravy so. and if you happen to make a couple of points you've yeah. got a six yeah I mean what would it take to get to twenty think about <laughs> well, that that's ridiculous yeah, yeah that's I'd like to go to a place that's had this for a while and just ask a dealer so you guys have had this for two years has anyone ever hit twenty that's a good question uh, yeah well if, if anybody goes to MGM Detroit and plays some craps there, ask about the Golden Dice Challenge and, you know, how often they've hit some of the bigger numbers. numbers, Maybe next time we... Even a thousand to one, the payout for a thousand to one would be very hard to do. Maybe next time we play, if we go this weekend, I'll start keeping track of how many passes each shooter Shooter makes. makes. There you go. Because it's something I've never done before. Yeah. They always love it when I (laughs) bring out my pad and start writing stuff down. Yeah. (laughs) What's so funny is it'll be something stupid like that and they'll be intrigued like, oh, what are you doing? And, you know, people are asking, are you trying to figure out some kind of system or anything? And then you just... No, I'm just keeping how many passes everybody makes. It makes, you know, why? It's, it's like, I don't know. I have, I, want I have a show. Yeah. yeah it's a, that's my answer. I have a show. <laughs> All right. Next call. Hi, I'm Mark and Dr. Mike. This is James calling from Salt Lake City. Just wanted to give you a report about playing crafts in Wendover, Nevada, where they have $5 minimums with 10 times odds. Specifically, I played at the Peppermill Casino I just wanted to mention a good experience that I had playing next to a don't player. He was betting pretty big, betting the don't, but my strategy is, is similar to what Marcus talks about quite a bit, which is just betting pass line bet with two come bets. And uh, whenever he was rolling, the don't player, he would roll quite a few numbers before sevening out. So I would win quite a few of my come bets, and then he would eventually win his don't bet because he'd seven out. 
So it worked out well for both of us, where both of us were able to walk away winners from the table. I just bought in for about $300 and bet the pass line with two combats. Um, and I was betting three, four, five times odds, even though it was a 10 times odd table, just because it worked better for my bankroll. But he was betting $100 at a time with full odds on the don't and seemed to be doing pretty well also. So just uh, wanted to report a good experience of playing the pass line against sort of a don't better and both of us being able to walk away winners from the table because, like I said, he was rolling a lot of numbers before sevening out, and so a lot of my combats were winning. Anyway, really good experience. I bought in for 300 cashed out for 5 just maybe about an hour and a half session, and it was it was a really good time, and it was a really respectful uh, don't player that was uh, actually enjoyable to play with. So anyway, thanks for a great podcast, and I look forward to your show next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Everybody well, getting no, along? There's actually no reason it shouldn't always be like that. Well, other than math, uh, but... Uh, well, <laughs> no, or... I, or I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the nice part. Okay, you know, winning yeah. or losing. I mean, you know, you shouldn't get too upset at a Oh, I see player. what you're saying. The way people are acting. The way people oh, oh, act. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I it should you. always be... Yeah, I understand the math. <laughs> okay. But I, I can't <laughs> control people. <laughs> yes, no, right, you know, right, and, right. And actually, we played with plenty of don't players. You sure. play the don't sometime right next to me. I know, when we're... And, we, uh, and there are times yes. when we both win, and it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect because yeah. my odds are working on yeah. the come out roll, and that's right. when the seven comes up, and it's like there good, are times hey, we're when okay. I'm losing miserably, and you're winning, and I'm uh, mad, but uh-huh. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I'm mad because I'm losing. All right. Well, it, you it, you it, say you're not mad at me, but no, you make I, comments. All right. No, I like, know. no, Mark's not going to roll. He's only betting the don't. No, right. And that's how you say it. That's, <laughs> that's your inflection. <laughs> well, I'm. But you're. I'm not mad that you're betting the don't you're just I'm, mad that you're I'm losing. mad that i'm losing right, and yeah. i'm taking it out on you there's a difference <laughs> <Okay>. there <laughs> but then you you um you did that a while back and then you switched yeah oh and i know there was that one night where i was on the don't just getting slaughtered, slaughtered. and i thought well i'm gonna switch and now it's gonna go cold but right. no it stayed hot it stayed and hot. i had a big comeback so yeah. that was nice yeah, yeah I know. huge comeback i know well that was a good story from james here's a story from will that's not quite so good Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Will from North Carolina again. I just finished up a Vegas trip. I want to tell you guys a little bit about it. Now, normally, it's the winning stories that are the more interesting things about the trip. But in my case, I thought there were a couple parts of my rolling that I was losing that I thought were pretty interesting. So pretty much the whole trip, I was playing pretty conservatively. I had some good sessions, had some bad sessions, but pretty much I ended up evening out. So on the last day, I'm like, okay, this is my last chance. I'm just going to go all out. So I went as aggressively as I could, and I got slaughtered on that table. Here's a great example of something that happened. Um, I remember a while back you guys talked about the pros and the cons of come bets and place bets. Well, the cons of both hit me really hard. So one time I was rolling, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to make continuous come bets, and that's all I decided to do. I proceeded to somehow get a combat up on every single number and hit a couple of twos and threes along the way uh-huh. and then seven out uh-huh. without hitting yep. a single one of my combat. Uh-huh. That was frustrating and bad enough. But then the shooter after me, she was a new player, and I was like, okay, I know she's going to roll well. So after she establishes her point, I decide to place all of the numbers. She proceeds to roll Immediate three up. 11s in a row and then seven out. <laughs> yep. So I didn't win a single bit on that either. And I couldn't believe it. If I just flip-flopped my strategies, I actually would have done okay. But I got killed both times, and that's exactly the way that table was. It's just everything was going against us. It wasn't just me. Everybody was getting slaughtered. One by one, every single player was being eliminated from the table. It was like something out of a movie. So one by one, everybody was leaving because they were out of money. I was the last one left, and I had $10 left. So I put five on the line. And guess what? I roll a two. So I even tell the dealers, all right, this is my last $5, and I put it on the line. I roll a seven. And the dealer jokes, hey, man, why don't you just stack it up? So I decided to take that five, put it on top of my line bet, my last $10 again, and guess what? I roll a three. <laughs> Me and the dealers just busted out laughing at that point. We just, we just couldn't believe it. It was so bad, it was just comical. It was like there was some mystical force around this table that was determined to just make everybody leave. And that's the thing. It's like you guys said, if you can't handle losing, you shouldn't be gambling. And, you know, it's frustrating. You get a little bit mad about it. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just have to laugh about it. And it just ends up becoming a funny story. 
And, you know, when it goes bad like this, it makes you appreciate the really good roles even more. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting way I ended up losing. All right, thanks, guys. I always appreciate it. Bye. Yeah, he's living our life. <laughs> That's right, living our lives. Uh, when things go so perfectly bad, it's yeah. hard to believe. It's hard. Yeah. To, and we always say, can you believe that happened? I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times we said that to each other. And it's like, that is the perfect bad scenario, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like if you sit down and try and figure it out, you can't come up with anything worse, right? <laughs> right. It's just the worst possible thing. <laughs> yeah. And every once in a while, you'll get a little bone. Oh, it's turning around. Yeah. And then boom, it slaps you in the <laughs> face. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now, I know the math. I'm going to say this up front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you don't have to even say that. All right. But how many times have we been in Harris Ring Con and on the come out roll, it's like a three or a 12 or something. And I parlay my world bet to the horn. Yeah. He always makes a whirl or a horn bet. You know, yep. and, mm-hmm. it, and it does sometimes hit. Yeah. But how many times has it, the next roll is a six. So and I lose, you make a point. Yeah. I, I lose mm-hmm. all that. And then Are the, you and the roll point, after yeah. that is three and then a two and then an 11 and then a seven out. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, how in the world does that happen? Yeah, is, is, is this a rhetorical question, yeah. or should I really give you the answer? No, don't give me the answer. It's rhetorical. <laughs> okay. But it's funny, because the dealers now out there, they're like, yeah, Mike, every time. Yeah. And, and, they're, and they're like, just on, after the six is made, go ahead and put a horn yeah, bet Yeah, always make a horn make bet. Make another horn as bet. As soon as a point is established, <laughs> the next roll, make a horn bet. Yeah, and that'll stop everything, because eight will come up. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So then it'll e- be two, three, either, either, 12, e- seven Either it'll out. stop it. Or you'll break the bank. Yeah, so or I'll break that? the yeah. bank. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, God. But it's like, how does that happen? I mean, it's you swear they've got some button underneath there that they push. Let's just get this guy. Let's just do the worst I, possible I, thing. They don't want to hurt you, Mike. They like you. <laughs> I know they do, but I just... Uh, hmm. It's frust- it, The thing is, he, he hit the nail on the head. It's frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating. Sure. I mean, we don't get violently mad or <laughs> no. you know we don't cuss at the dealer no or, never no you know, no no we never no, no. do anything like that no. it's just so frustrating sure. and you you want to like slam your fist into well, the it's, table it's frustrating because you're beating the odds right and that's why you're at the casino to beat right. the odds and yeah. when you're beating the odds the by wrong it's way. exactly the wrong way <laughs> right. it's frustrating because yeah. you do sometimes beat the odds the other way yeah you do and you feel great <laughs> yeah. you know and the you know i guess there's some guy up in the main office oh darn it <laughs> how'd that guy roll six well, i forgot to press the button, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike, this is Doug from uh, Northern California. Hey, I'm all caught up on the show, so I started looking at some prior shows, and I caught one from September 3rd, 2015, and you guys were talking about promotion where a casino would give you cash for promo tips, and you get to choose. And the consensus was pretty much there's no difference, might as well take the cash, but there actually is a difference. You know, if you're playing promo chips. The promo chips that I've seen or received, they're a play to you lose. So in theory, if you were playing $100 a hand and you won 10 hands in a row, you would collect that 1000 and still have your promo chip left. So I'm not sure if that's how all promo chips work, but there is a difference there if you decided to uh, just try your luck out. That's just taking the cash. Anyways, love the show. Bye. That was one of our more embarrassing episodes because the yeah. question to us was, if you could take free play or cash for the same amount, which would you take? And immediately we both said, oh, cash, cash, yeah. of course, well, why wouldn't you take the cash? because intuitively that seems the best way to go. But it was so aggravating because we completely forgot about the tax implications. Right. And what was really embarrassing is that previously we had talked about, oh, you'd want to take free play because of the tax you know, reasons. Right. And for whatever reason, we just zoned on that show. Yeah. So, in, in no, we bought well drinks for everybody yeah. except Doug. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So yeah, we kind of backstep and said, "Well, yeah, if you're getting you know these promo chips that are play till you lose or cash, right. maybe you, maybe you go with the promo chips because of tax right. purposes, right? Right. It depends on the implications yeah. of the tax. It's, exactly. It's sure. You, you know, if it's twenty it, bucks, a big deal, right? right? But you know, if it, you're talking about a thousand, yeah. Well, or, you know, when yeah. I've gotten you know several thousand before, yeah, right. and then they tax you on it, that's yeah, when that's, it, that's, that's when you want the promo, but. Specifically to Doug's point, now he was saying, well, if you had a promo chip that, you know, play till you lose for $100, right. well, it just stays out there. So that's better than cash. It's no different. It's ex- it's 
it's like having a hundred dollar bill out there right. that doesn't play till you lose, right? It right. still stays out there. Well, so. but you might take the hundred dollar bill back at some point. The promo chip you'd leave out there. Oh, okay, that's true. I guess. Right. Play that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but, I mean, yeah, theoretically, yeah. it is like having a hundred dollars yeah. out there. But psychologically, if you had a hundred dollars out there and it won five times in a row, you might say, "I'm done. I'm okay. getting out of here." Oh, well, that's true. But the promo chip, the promo you chip, can't you, do ha- that. you, you, you have to keep so playing. You keep playing. So it's right? psychological. So, like we said, for tax purposes, maybe it's better to take promo chips. However, if the promo chips are not play to you lose, right? If they will, which uh, they usually aren't. Well, they you know at at Harrah's where we go, they are not, not. play till you lose. Right. They'll take it whether you win or lose the bet. Right. If that's the case, absolutely go for the cash. Right. If you could have a hundred dollars in cash or a hundred dollars in these chips, where they take them win or lose, right? You absolutely want to go for the cash because those promo chips, a hundred dollars worth, their real value is like fifty dollars. Right. Right. Because of that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. If well, yeah, because you're gambling, right? So. You're it's whatever the house edge is, you know, right. off of that $50. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's hear about Atlantic City from Vinny. Hey, Mark. Hey, Dr. Mike. It's uh, Vinny from Long Island, from the East Coast again. Just uh, want to drop by with a trip report. Uh, spent the last four nights, uh, you know, in Atlantic City. Uh, the Borgata Spring Open was happening, which is a series of tournaments, and uh, played in a few of those. Happy to say I made a couple day twos, cashed two of the three tournaments. You know, unfortunately, I put in probably more than 30, 35 hours of work for the kind of minimal caches, but uh, it was definitely a great time. I spent the first two nights, Wednesday night and Thursday night, at Harris. You know, I've been a little down on Harris lately. Uh, been a little bit of a crime, I guess you can say, that was reported there. Some guns being pulled, some fights, uh, you know, I'm hearing about over the past few months. So I was a little weary about it, but happy to say when I got there on a Wednesday night, midweek, was upgraded to a suite, and I had never been in a suite before at Harris. I um, usually get the waterfront rooms, which are okay at best. Put me in a suite in the waterfront, which was bigger than suites I've seen in Vegas. It was uh, pretty mammoth, almost too big to the point where at night you got to kind of walk around, shut off all the lights, make sure uh, all the air conditioners on. There was three different uh, you know air conditioner units, three different bathrooms. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. It can be too big. It's yeah. annoying. I had turned all these lights off. Well, you know, it was funny, Mike, when we went to Harris, Atlantic City, yeah. you got a suite at where we were both going to stay. Right. And it was it was huge. Yeah. But it was just one king size bed. Right. Right. I it mean, was the biggest one of the biggest suites. Yeah. And it had one king size bed. That's not uncommon, I think. Yeah. But, you know, in Sarah, it's we like, go down. Uh, we're two guys. Yeah. We're, we, we're, we're, we're married. We're both married to other people. people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would have been fine with that size room and two single beds. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, don't, I only need a single bed, <laughs> a, a wide single bed. No, I know. <laughs> but we're very happy to see that they, uh, you know, midweek were able to treat me like, you know, upgrading for free to that room. Uh, you know, had a couple of good crap sections, uh, hit some all small tolls. So I uh, started off the trip pretty, pretty good, pretty hot. I would say come Friday when I went over to Borgata, though, uh, definitely got in a little bit of a rut, caught in a slot machine there for a little more than I wanted. But day, day that I have as much money in my pocket as I left with. So I've had a great little uh, crap session this morning. I mean, I got my a couple hundred dollars in, in match play, brought it over to Pi Gal was able to get, uh, you know, a good starting roll for a crap session. I went over to a table, a couple of hard tens got hit, kept parlaying, and, uh, you know, was able to away with, uh, again, just as much as I uh, came with. So I just wanted to give a little trip report. Um, it was a great time, as always. do appreciate all that you guys do. And, uh, you know, also, one other thing I, I did notice as I was kind of walking the boardwalk, I tend to take a trip down there, even if it's just walking for a few hours, that it looks like uh, the showboat has something opening soon. So I heard something about a gaming expo, which I, I don't know really what that means. Um, so I was hoping you guys could give some insight on that if you heard anything. Uh, but thanks again for everything you guys do, and I'll uh, call back in a few weeks when I go to Atlantic City again. Thanks. Good. Thanks for the report, Vinny. Yep. Yeah, The so the showboat is going to be hosting the Atlantic City Fan Expo. Which is kind of like a Comic Con, but way more emphasis on video games. They're going to have like online gaming and retro gaming, and you know a lot of panels but and everything. Not, and not gambling gaming. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, video gaming. Video yeah, yeah, e games. Yeah, you know e-games, that kind of right, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, on last week's episode of Do for a Win, they interviewed Sean Smith who is one of the co-founders of the Fan Expo. So be sure to go back and listen to that episode if you haven't already. That was he goes into a lot of, you know, what they're planning. It's going to be, you know, over the summer. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. All right, final call. 
Hi guys, this is John in Washington D.C. Just calling with a uh, trip report from the MGM National Harbor. I just went there. It's a Sunday afternoon. Pretty busy. A lot of the other callers have said um, similar things about the layout being very nice and the games being pretty prevalent. And uh, the craps tables were, of course, 25 minimum seemed to be the going rate. Um, however, I played blackjack, and there was a ton of blackjack tables available. However, uh, they were pretty much all, except for apparently a few in the VIP uh, high roller rooms, they were automatic card shufflers, or continuous card shufflers, rather, paying 6 to 5 on blackjack and dealer hitting on soft 17. So just not the rules you want to see at a table. But the minimums, of course, down to like 15 up to 25, but throughout the same setup. So for a blackjack player, that's a little discouraging because I sat down, bought in with my amounts, and over the course of three hours ended up pretty much just getting out of the game at even, going up and down. I I actually got about six or seven blackjacks, but when betting the minimum, I was getting a couple extra bucks thrown in. So it was really just completely like not even worth getting the blackjack. It was almost like, here's three three white chips for you just so you feel better to tip the cocktail waitress. Anyway, um, I would say Maryland Live, their competitor, is a much better option for blackjack players. They they tend to have three to two payouts on almost all the tables. They do also use the continuous shuffler, but they have the just the better payout. I think also there it's stand on all 17, so that's a much better rule uh, overall. Anyway, I love the show and uh, big fan, and uh, we'll keep listening. Thank you. Yeah, weren't the guys that you met up with at uh, MGM National Harbor, weren't right. they telling you Maryland Live uh, they for Maryland lower Live. limits and stuff? Yeah, right. yeah. Lower limits and better rules. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's funny, too, because you think that casinos, especially ones that are close and kind of in competition with each other, mm-hmm. I don't know that any casino is really in competition with another because gamblers love to go different places. Yeah. So when their luck's bad here, they go there. Yeah. So you're going to get those people anyway. Yeah. It's not like you're in competition, like I'm never going back to that place. No, the place you're at, as soon as your luck's bad, you go to that place. Mm, yeah. So if it's, well, if it's reasonable you know, to go to the other place. Yeah, if it's within, reasonable, yeah. right. But I, what I mean by in competition, they're close enough mm, that, yeah. you know, when you're leaving your house, you're like, well, should I go to that one or this one? Yeah. And you go to one because of whatever reason, you would think that they would tend to have similar rules and similar limits to kind of draw people but if business is there you see that's the thing i think in this case mgm national harbor is just doing a bang up business right Right. it's always crowded right so they don't really have any competition sort of if you know what i'm saying right right, because their tables are full yeah yeah now when the tables aren't full then they got to come down and they got to get people from that other place it's like mgm national harbor probably doesn't have to have a giveaway out (laughs) here the local indian casinos the the newest one always has the most giveaways yeah that's true at the Hollywood they, Casino now here it has oh, a lot like, of different oh giveaways every week got, it's something yeah yeah they got they got ones that run the whole week we got I got a flyer yesterday did you get this flyer I don't think so it's like every day of the week there's a giveaway really no every I, day I'll check I don't I and don't it's think it's like I got all some. beach stuff one oh, day okay. it's a beach chair one yeah. day it's a tote thing one yeah. day it's like five days in a row yeah it's they're like, trying to get people out yeah, there yeah Harrow's will have one a week maybe mm-hmm. yeah they're gonna get five days in a row they're gonna get people out there right mm-hmm. yeah the problem is is until people stop going to a 6-5 blackjack table, they're going to have 6-5 blackjack. Yeah, and, you know, we've talked about too. we were blue in the face, and 6 five's not going anywhere. It's you like know, the Padres. Too many people. Let me tell how, you, it's how exactly it like the Padres, Because like pa- the Padres draw 2 million fans plus yeah. the last few years. Yeah. Why would the owner spend any money and get any decent players if 2 million people are going to come when you're in last place? Well, you could say that about the Cubs. That's was a, right. a, 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 what they'd always say about the Cubs right. was, you know, there's well, no reason to the put Cubs money behind it. The Cubs actually want to win, but the, the owners who own the Padres <laughs> now, they want to make profit. Yeah. They do not want to win. Yeah. The Cub owners actually wanted to win. Okay. It just didn't work for them. Yeah, all right. But seriously, that the Padre owners now are out for one thing, profit. Mm-hmm. And if 2 million people are going to come to see a last place team, yeah. they're not going to spend more money than they have to. And as a businessman, I wouldn't either. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. And I it's know. the same with MGM, right? If people are going to come and sit and play 6-5 blackjack and they got full tables, they're going to play $25 6-5 blackjack out of a continuously shuffling shoe, yeah. I mean, then why change? Yeah, we could sit here all day long and talk about how team owners should respect the fans, right. how casinos should respect the players, but uh, 
I don't know that we're going to get anywhere with that. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd make for an awfully long episode. <laughs> <laughs> or a very short one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'd be long because I got a lot I got of, a lot to say. I got a lot to say. Well, I'll tell you. Well, let's move on to our gambling scene. We haven't done this segment for a little while. Uh, last time we did do this segment, we had a realistic gambling scene from a relatively obscure movie. It was I Love You, Man, that short uh, poker right. scene from that. Well, this time we've got a not very realistic gambling scene from a huge movie, Rain Man. Yeah. One of the biggest movies of all time. That's a good scene, now, too. For, now, for those who are not familiar with the movie, Rain Man stars Tom Cruise as a man who discovers he has an older brother who is an autistic savant, played by Dustin Hoffman. It's sort of a road movie, and eventually the pair ends up in Las Vegas, where Tom Cruise's character uses his brother's talent for counting cards to win at the blackjack tables. Now, I've edited this clip down quite a bit because uh, there are long stretches without a lot of meaningful audio, but let's take a listen to them first practicing counting and then going and playing at the table and finally getting some heat from the pit. Are you paying attention? Yeah. You watching that? Yeah. yeah. You seeing that, Ray? You catching that? Yeah, falling on yeah? the ground. <laughs> okay, yeah. now what, what do I have left? Two jacks, one eight, one king, one six. Two aces, one ten, one nine, one five. One five. Yeah. You are beautiful, man. Yeah. I'm an excellent driver. You can't drive now, Ray. Now, you listen to me, this is very important. So when there's lots of tens left, tens and picture cards, and it's good for us. Now, come on, say it. Tens are good. Tens are good. Okay. You're going to bet one. One if it's bad. Two if it's good. That's right. Two if, two if it's good, Ray. Now, listen, casinos have house rules. Yeah. The first one is they don't like to lose. So you never, never show that you are counting cards. That is the cardinal sin, Ray. Are you listening to me? That's very, very important. Yeah. Counting, counting is bad. Yes, no counting count. is bad. Rain Man? Yeah. Let's play some cards. Yeah. You want to hit? No, you don't want to hit, Ray. You've got 18. want to hit. So you have 18. You don't want to hit. He doesn't want to hit. Hit Definitely me. want to hit. Hitting 18. He doesn't want to hit. Hit me. Hit me. Don't. Hit. Don't. You took my queen, Ray. I've got a 10. I needed that queen. I can't take sir, your queen. Sir, please don't touch the cards. I need my own queen, Ray. There's lots of them. There's lots of them? Lots and lots of them. Hold on here. Hold on here for a second. I'm going to double down. Queen. Queen. Yes. Yes, sir. I love this town. What are you going for, Nick? Looks like it, <laughs> sir. Looks like it. You want to bet one chip or two chips, Ray? Bet two. Bet two? <laughs> hey, what's your secret, guys? You cheat. <laughs> this is Sam. Tape, table 47. About eighty-five thousand. Eighty-five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Call the guy in the sky. Oh, Sam did. Sam did. Okay, I'll take over. For you. Doing well. I'm happy for you. What do you see? Well, he's not catching the whole card. He's not past posting this. I don't see him using a computer. No, he's not. But something's not right. You know, there's no one in the world can count to a six-deck shoot. Okay, so it's a good scene, and yeah. you know they get comp this huge suite at Caesar's Palace, and right. you know of course it's a great movie, but I definitely have some issues with the the whole scene. Well, things they do, the gambling things, are not right. How so? Well, because when he's counting, I mean they never go to the end of a shoe. Oh, see, yeah, that's the thing is that one of the things I mean, that's that, the most yeah, obvious right. thing at the end. He says, "Oh, there's nobody in the world who can count down, you know, a, a, a shoe, shoe like that." And it's first of all, yes, there are people. If you're just yeah. talking about counting cards, oh yeah. Now, if you're talking about actually knowing how many card, the exact cards that are left, left, right? Okay, yeah, maybe nobody can do that. Well, but you like you said, it counts higher, but yeah. you can't tell how many cards are. Yeah, that's the thing is, you know, when they were ready to shuffle again, they probably have two decks, you know, that they haven't yeah. even dealt, right? right? So oh, how much yeah, can that help you, right? At so, least two decks. You know, yeah. Right. So that's that's unrealistic. Right. Plus, at the beginning when they start playing, this doesn't make any sense. 
Rain Man wants to take a hit. He's got 18, and he right. wants to take a hit. He insists on it, uh-huh. right? And he finally takes a hit. And then, you know, Tom Cruise's character is all mad. Well, why'd you do that? You know, it's like, don't worry, there are a lot of queens left. Right. Well, if Rain Man knew there were a lot of queens left, why did, why did he take the hit? Why was he so insistent on taking, taking the hit? The hit. Right. I, I don't understand. <laughs> and then the other thing is, and this was really what it comes down to, is counting cards is really a grind. Right. You know, you may have a big session, but the edge that you have as a card counter is so small that it's really a grind. And, you know, typically... Right. You're you know, playing for the long run when yeah, you're right, counting cards. Right. And th- right. this made it seem like every hand they were winning, no matter what, because right. he was counting cards, yeah. you know. No, and but, all uh, the count can tell you is that you have a good chance of winning that hand. doesn't yeah. mean you're going to win that right. hand. Right, so you bet more so, on that, so but there's no guarantee. Yeah. But there's no guarantee, because you can yeah. get 12 and then the 10 yeah. comes, you know, yeah. it's... Yeah, it, that's the part about the movie that got to me. Yeah, is. yeah. But, you know, it's a very entertaining film, of course. It's a classic. And, right. uh, and uh, you know, even though we've got, I guess, kind of nitpicky things, because the general public's, you know, not right. going to look at that. Although the general so. public's looking at that and thinking, here's a guy who knows every card in the order that they're in there. <laughs> yeah. That's, and, and that's what they think counting that's, is. That's what it kind of seems like, is, right. yeah, he knows exactly what the next card coming it, out right, is, and exact, nobody knows that, right? The exact right? Yeah. order. Unless yeah. the cards are and, marked. And <laughs> people who don't understand counting think that's what a counter's doing, like, mm-hmm. oh, they know a four is coming up, so I've got 17, I better hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. <laughs> And that's not the case. Yeah. All right. Well, this is, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey, we want to thank some people for some PayPal donations. First of all, recurring donations from Brian and Sarah. Thanks very much. And also from Zach. Thank you. We also got a PayPal donation from another Brian. Thank you. And one from our buddy Andrew. He said it's a karma donation for the 10th trip with my brother next weekend. Looking forward to seeing you and Dr. Mike in a month. At Vegas Vacation 4. Yeah, we're looking for that. Boy, that's coming up here yep. soon. It's yeah, very soon. I know. Well, yeah, Monday. This coming Monday is like a month May. away. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listings showing all the gambling related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program to search through all the raw American TV data. Just go to our webpage, you can bet on that.com, and click on the link at the top that says TV listings towards the top and over on the right. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> on the page. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377 that's 9512 wagers or you can email us at you can bet on that at gmail.com also follow us on twitter at you can bet on that we tweet when we're heading to a casino and we'd love to meet up with you like us on facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that and finally head on over to itunes and write a review on us when you do it helps us get new listeners oh the kentucky derby's coming up yep. i forgot to talk about that i had in the right. show notes here where it's going to actually be a week from saturday so it will yeah, run not uh, this saturday not this saturday but the, the next one so the saturday. next next episode we have out it'll be after the kentucky derby so yeah. we'll have to see how we do on that i don't know yeah <laughs> see how we yeah. do yeah anything else dr mike gosh it's baseball season. We're happy about that. Well, we the, mentioned that before. The Padres yeah, Padres suck as mm-hmm. usual. Yeah, yep. there was a point where they were at five hundred, and I was kind of excited. Oh yeah, they, like with they, ten, ten, games ten games into the games, season, they were five yeah. and mm-hmm. five. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. now they're what eight and fourteen. All right, or something. All right. we've so, talked about them. Anything yeah. else? No. Okay. I don't have anything else. All right. I, I just hope uh, the end of May comes soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that so much. Yeah. We, we, we see everybody. All right. Thanks for listening. Good night. Good night.